talking about software-defined radio with Matt Edis, the principal of Edis Research. Matt, what exactly is software-defined radio? Well, the idea behind software-defined radio is that you have a very simple piece of hardware that is capable of multiple things, uh, handling multiple systems, and then you do all the complex things that would normally take different pieces of hardware, you do that in software. That way, one piece of hardware can handle a lot of different systems. So maybe if I had the right chip, I could do 802.11, like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and WiMAX and exactly. any other sets of radio frequencies. Exactly. Um, the, usually you're just constrained by the frequency band. So if you had a 2.4 gig uh, software radio, you could do Wi-Fi, uh, cordless phones, Bluetooth, all that stuff. Um, or uh, another band you could do, uh, you know, garage door openers, public safety, ham radio, all, all, all with the same hardware. When you're looking at this, is it, you know, how, how is this in the market now, or is it just starting to emerge? Or Well, it, it's starting to emerge. Uh, there's a lot of research in the area, and there are some practical uh, applications that people are actually deploying now. Um, there's some RFID stuff. Uh, there are... Um, in the military, there's a lot of use of it. Uh, they have a lot of a large number of communication systems that are incompatible, and so they use this to bridge between that. Uh, public safety, it's very big with public safety. Um, there's a company that's deploying these now in uh, cell phone base stations. Uh, that's it's still in the mostly experimental stage, but it's it's moving along. Uh, so there are, there are some applications out there, but it, it is definitely on the early side of the curve. Is it essentially like time sharing? Does it do like a half a second of this radio, a half a second of that radio, or how does it actually uh, emulate all of them? Well, so it, it's a number of ways. So if you have a, a, a wide enough band that your software radio can handle, you can actually do multiple things at once. Mm -hmm. um, multiple of the same type of system, or you know, some FM, some AM, some you know, cell phone. If it, it all fits in the same bandwidth. And so uh, there's a lot of that. Uh, there's some research in an area called cognitive radio. The idea being that your ra your radio, it's like software radio with artificial intelligence. It, it would say, oh, this guy is using this modulation system. I can talk to him this way. This other guy is using this different modulation system. So to talk to him, I have to use this other one and be able to use both at once and switch between them. Uh, also, I, and another advantage is, let's say, in a cell phone base station, if all of a sudden, you know, Singular, say, wants to roll out megabit data service to your cell phones, they could just send a software upgrade. They don't have to change their old base stations, which is really part of the reason why our cell phones don't advance as fast as you would think, because they have to make back all the money on that infrastructure they put out there. But if it was all done in software, they could just, you know, send an update and be able to... So if you, have a, faster. if you have a software radio that's working on different frequencies, how do you get around? Do you have to have multiple antennas for that, or do you sort of tune to the middle on the antenna? Well, so some antennas uh, are, you can design wider band antennas, uh, or you can have multiple uh, separate antennas. Or, or very often, um, the applications are, are limited bandwidth because, if, especially if you're transmitting, to transmit, you know, where you have authority to transmit is usually not that wide a range. Sure. Um, for reception, you use the wider band antennas a lot, um, but you know, no, there's nobody who can transmit from 200 meg to a gig, right? Uh, legally, at least. So <laughs> the magic antenna. Yeah, yeah. Where do you think this is going to show up first? Like, is a mini PCI card inside of computers to emulate multiple forms of, you know, networking, or is it going to show up so the military can put seven radios in one box? Well, it's, it definitely it's going to hit the military first. It, it's going to uh, and it. it they were really the people who started with a project called Speakeasy maybe 15 years ago. The idea was to have a handheld that the soldier could carry that could talk to, you know, all the hundreds of different systems they have. It ended up being the size of a truck, but the newer generations are getting smaller and smaller. Um, and so the, the public, it's going to be big in public safety, uh, cell phone base stations. Eventually you might see it in a laptop, you know, if, if the manufacturer wants to be able to do WiMAX, Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth, and Bluetooth all in one piece of hardware, mm -hmm. you you may see it there. Uh, it, 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 that's a little further along because it, it it'll be you know a little higher power um, and a little higher cost at first, but it, it's coming along in that direction. What's your favorite thing going on right now in software radio? Software defined. I mean, software defined. Well, so radio. I, I actually I, I prefer not to use the defined okay. in the middle of it because. Uh, I, I, I call it software radio. This term software defined radio is kind of the FCC coined it sure. in, in the sense of if the radios are defined in software, how do we regulate it? And I'm not a big fan of them regulating it, so so I, I just say software radio. Um, but I, I'm really excited about uh, a lot of applications. There's um, the, ni the nice thing about it, there's people using it for radio astronomy, there's ham radio. It, it, it's kind of all over the place, and there's a lot of research in 
in spectrum efficiency in ha in using uh, softer radios and cognitive radios mm -hmm. to more effectively use spectrum. Let's say a t there's a distant TV station on channel 63, but it, nobody receives it here. Sure. Why can't I use that six megahertz to do wireless internet? So there's research in, in that area, and the FCC is actually looking into it. about letting the people have access to not use bandwidth there's in their locality? A, there's a huge That's madness. Uh, there's a lot of people Anarchy. against it. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge uh, lobby against it. But um, there, the FCC is looking into that. <laughs> Clear channel. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Clear channel, all the TV stations, the, the cellular people, everybody's against right. it, except for, you know, individuals and... Uh, there's an organization called New America Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, they're involved in it. The Electronic Frontier Foundation, also uh, big in the area. If somebody out in the audience wants to get involved, start experimenting with software radio, how do you uh, recommend they start? I, I would say go to the GNU Radio website and uh, sign up for our mailing list. There's uh, We've got probably over a 1,000 people on there, a lot of uh, people of all skill levels from you know professionals in the industry uh, all the way on down. People are very helpful, a lot of uh, you know topic area experts. and. And uh, yeah, just join in. Sweet. Matt, thank you so much for taking the time to oh, talk to us. Thank you.